here, did I explain to you guys what I'm even doing in this ordeal of mine? Yeah, hang about. I've got that document they wrote about it after it happened. Oh yeah, I'm a hero, you know. I mean, I was. When anyone cared. Here we are. Enclosed Instruction Book, it's called. Always thought that was a strange name for the thing. But that's what they went with. And I also always thought the writing style of this thing was a bit weird. But I'll read the thing out for you now, so you have some understanding what's going on here. Ahem. The game. Many years ago, on a moonless night... Wait, moonless night? There's never a night without a moon. Who wrote this? Uh oh It's the bouncing eyeball conga line! Make way, lads! Fat chance, you purple pods! Clear off out of it! This is our part of the tree! Oh, is that so? Well, well then I'll just walk past you. Get nicked, because I didn't have a chance to dodge him. Um, a small child was stolen away from its unsuspecting parents. Its mysterious abductors carried it far across the land to the mighty Temple Necropolis. There the child was accepted by the Mages of Darkness, warrior priests of the Beast Lord. Yeah, the Beast Lord, that's the beast from the title of this, I assume. Deep below the temple, the child was escorted, passing through a labyrinth of rooms and passages to the Chambers of Creation. There the evil mages... What? Evil mages? Steady on, mates. I mean, I appreciate you just said they were Mages of Darkness, they worked in a place called the Necropolis, but calling them evil seems a bit judgmental, doesn't it? The evil mages work their dark arts, creating strange creatures, plants, and traps to guard the beast's stronghold. So that's where all those spikes and ghosts and bouncing eyeballs and tumbleweeds and everything else came from. Somehow. For the child, they had a special purpose, but first came years of preparation. Secret potions concocted from the blood of rare creatures slowly transformed his appearance, turning him from human into a strange creature of incredible power, agility, and strength. <laughs> incredible power, agility, and strength. Get stuffed, guys. I literally couldn't even punch out a tumbleweed. Deep hypnosis caused him to erase memories of his past life completely and become the warrior messenger of the beast. What? Warrior messenger? What's that even mean? Would that be like if Postman Pat busted down the door and beat people senseless before he handed them his letters? I don't get it. Many years passed in his service to the temple as he grew to maturity. Then one day, he discovered an awful secret. The horrible truth about his past. A truth that now leads him on a trail of total and bloody revenge against his masters. You were that child. Now the time has come to enter the shadow of the beast. Now, yeah, I was that kid what got kidnapped. They made me drink a bunch of blood, and somehow that made me into this thing. Funny how it doesn't say how I found out or I, or I was or I, or I, or I, how I found out I was kidnapped. I just accidentally stumbled on the Dark Mage's weekly tiddlywink session. They just mentioned it during the debate about the legendary three-dimensional tiddlywink. In search of the beast, in the grounds of the crop, this all was silent and still. The moon, low and large on the horizon. Oh, so the moon's back now, is it? Through long, dark shadows into the corners, and a cold blue light across the stony ground, disguising the blood-red stains, oh dear, on the sacrificial stone. Not a single creature stirred to disrupt the tranquility. Not a leaf moved on the nearby trees. Yeah, I bet the leaves wouldn't have hesitated to move if I'd shown up, thrown themselves at me with no warning. There was not a trace of life in that sinister place, but for a single point of light glinting against the age-worn face of a statue. Up there in the huge arms of the deity's image sat a lone creature. In its powerful hand it clutched a globe of seeing, which it moved slowly from side to side, examining its reflected features. As it did so, it recalled the events of that day. The frightened humans being herded in a central courtyard. 
the pathetic pleas for help as they were dragged one by one to the sacrificial stone. God oh, blimey, this is getting a bit harsh. The final air ending screams as the knife came down in one swift arc and the life blood ran. You mean blood? Why didn't you just say blood? Oh, I've never heard it called life blood before. You're just being pretentious now. Who wrote this? And then, a tired, resigned face being pushed towards the stone. A face that seemed of some importance to him. Him, I guess, being the the man with the, the thing, the, the, the one with the, the clutch of the globe is seeing. Yet, yeah, now, yeah, how could that be when the lives of these people meant nothing to him? And as the gleaming blade struck home, he recognised the agonised, the agonised, the agonised, what? It's got the agonised written twice here. Whatever. As the gleaming blade struck home, he recognised the agonised face of his father. And suddenly the painful memories of all he had been came flooding back to him. His masters had done this to him. They had been responsible for all that he was, and the loss of all he might have been. Well, now they would pay. Now the warrior would stop killing for his masters, and begin to exact his revenge. Oh, I remember that too well. Yeah, that's right, that was me that was. Oh dear. Why I start reading this? Where's my coffee? This is why I started drinking coffee. Standing, he lifted the globe high above his head and clenching his clawed hand. What? Clawed hand? Do you see claws? Crushed it to a hundred tiny shards. Now the warrior's head lefted. Lefted? Lefted? Is that a word? Yeah, hang on. I've got that other magical projector thing what shows me what words mean. Yeah, just give me a minute now. This won't take long. Uh, what's it? Dictionary dot com. Right, that was it. Oh, I remember that right enough. Left. Left. Lefted. If I put in lefted, it'll probably just won't accept that, will it? Uh, these things. I don't get it. Right, uh, that was that word of the day, Amaran Fine. Unfading Everlasting. I've never heard of that word. I've, I've, I've never heard of that word. They made that up. That's not a real word. Amaran Fine. You're having a laugh. What? Mm. Ah. I always spell it wrong, that's why. Right, <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry I use lot, I uh, sorry I use lot watching this uh, over there. This uh, what's that? Uh, point. Right, left it. I'm invested in this now. I'm going to expand my vocabulary. No, it didn't have that. Right, let's just try left. Oh, why does this thing take so long again? Good grief. Right, left. I mean, not, not right. Left's not, not left as in the opposite of right. Left as in left and whatever that was. You know what I'm saying. Right. What you don't. Well, never mind. All right. Of, relating to, or located on, or near the side of. Good grief. How many variations of this you've got to say before you explain what the word actually means? Near the side of a person or thing that is turned toward the west when the subject is facing north. Could you have made that description of left any more complicated if you tried? Of or belonging to the political left, having liberal or radical views in politics. Well, there you have it then. Anybody what's that left wing they talk about means they've got radical views in politics. I, well, there, that's dictionary.com laid down the gauntlet there. Mathematics pertaining to an element of a set that has a great property when written on the left. Oh, a given property when written on the left of an element or set of elements of the set. What? The left side or something that is on the left side. 
the left side or something that is on the left side and turn toward the left. Make a left in the next corner. The left, the complex of individuals and organised groups advocate liberal reform or revolutionary change in the social, political or economic order. Crimey, I didn't know that's what political left meant. Revolutionary change? Really? Every single person what's left leading whatever that even means in the first place, and whatever it even meant before I found out this is what it meant, means they're after revolutionary change. Oh, whatever. I'm no politician. I'm not going to get into any of that nonsense. Oh no. There's a lot over there I can stop clamoring on about politics right now. I hear you gossiping over there. I won't be having any of that. Nothing but arguments. A blow delivered by the left hand. Left field. The part of a legislative assembly, especially in continental Europe, that is situated on the left side of the presiding officer and that is customarily assigned to members of the legislature who wrote more radical and what surprise, radical and socialistic views than the rest of the member. Cool blimey, all I learned from this is that anything involved in left wing politics and involves being radical and what revolutionary change. What's next? Does right mean the uh, what? Uh, oh well, point is, left it was not a word in the definition that this thing meant, so, uh, so we all learned absolutely nothing. So back to the story. Now the warrior's head lifted towards the heavens. He searched the sky for the dark halls of the ships whence his masters had come, and let out a roaring howl that spoke his defiance. Yeah, those dark halls of those ships, that's that blimp that was up there. I guess. Nothing would stop him now. He would crush them as he had crushed their globe. And he would never stop until the blood of all of them and their creation soaked into the earth. Right, so let's recap it. The masters, what may or may not have been the Dark Majors, now if it's not clarified this point, was sacrificing a bunch of humans to some god or other. That's not right, you don't go sacrificing humans. And they were coming to and fro on that blimp thing I spotted earlier. Remember that? I was just sort of standing there apparently on that god statue with a ball. Globe of seeing, whatever that is. No explanation given. Well, I can tell you what it is since they didn't. It was that rare yeah, one of a kind tiddlywink what those dark mages had been fighting over in the Grand Tiddlywinks Championship. Yeah, I stole the thing. It looked pretty. It's almost as if whoever wrote this wanted to spice things up a bit, not mentioning that. Yeah, call it a globe of sea. Sure, whatever. It's a tiddlywink. It's a 3D tiddlywink. Flame red eyes stared out across the sun scorched plain, scanning the distant tree line. The warrior was allowing himself a brief moment to enjoy the stillness. A respite before he once again set mind and body against the unnatural creatures his former masters had spawned. Drawing in breath sharply, he flexed his ardent muscles, for no reason apparently, became aware of the blood rushing through his arteries. Yeah, I got two hearts. Fat lot of good at ever, didn't he? The warrior knew that his power and speed were all that ensured his survival. Yeah, that and the 50,000 resurrections from the gods. The day that he became weak, the hour that he became slow, would be his last. Setting off at a run, he headed towards the trees. Steric eye. Yeah, good thinking there, me. Otherwise, you would have ended up running miles to the right, only to find out there's a castle what's got a door you can't even open. He headed toward the trees, stirring up a trail of grey dust behind him. To have remained on the plane while the sun was high would have been fatal. Got that right? Yeah. But the shade of the trees most likely concealed a darker fate. As the warrior reached the first growths, his instincts told him that he was unlikely to be alone for long. His eyes darted from side to side, watching for the tiniest movement that would betray a predator. When it came, it did so with speed, rushing at him full on. Its black wings crashing through the foliage, and from its blood-filled mouth came a piercing scream as it sighted its kill! Again, 
I'd like to remind you that the first thing I encountered was a tumbleweed. The warrior had barely enough time to crouch as the creature threw at his head. Well, they got that right. Turning swiftly, he brought his bone-covered fist up hard into the creature's soft underbelly. Hang on! I couldn't punch upwards! Just to the sides! All this artistic license, yeesh! Uh-oh. Another freakish abomination. Yeah. I don't know where all these hideous creatures came from, or why they look so messed up. Well, that story said it was the Beast Ward Master Mage Dark whatever's that made them. But yeah, they got some twisted imaginations. But the warrior ignored the body. Why are they so uncomfortable with naming me? The warrior. Ah, Bron's my name. Ah, Bron. Behind him had come another screech. Too close this time. As he turned and dived for cover, another winged demon flew at him. Claws extended for the kill. The warrior struck out again, but the creature was too quick, and he felt its talons tearing into his abdomen as he rolled away into the undergrowth. He lay there, panting, momentarily dazed. He could feel a warm wetness across his side and stomach, and with it a sharpening pain, but he concentrated on ignoring it. The wound would congeal soon enough, and if he stayed any longer, he would lose far more than a little blood. He stood slowly fighting the waves of pain that passed through him, feeling his heart's pounding faster. But he had to be moving. Other creatures would not ward off another attack. Yeah, unlock the door inside the castle to get out of the castle. Oh, begging your pardon, governor. Sir. Just got to switch the things. Discs, as it calls them. Now it screamed in pain, spinning in midair and crashing down between the gnarled roots of a tree. As he stumbled between the trees, he noticed something out of place against a distant trunk. Coming closer, he realised that it was a doorway. A beast mage construction, and going onwards. Again, is that the dark mages or something else? There's like a million different names for things in this so far. I think you only of the things that would soon be trailing him. I.e. tumbleweeds, the warrior took a chance and dropped through into the darkness. What, you mean the tree? He was just in time. Behind him there was a blood-curdling scream, followed by a resounding crash, as another winged creature failed to follow him through the opening. The warrior took only a moment to reflect that once more he had beaten the odds before taking stock of his situation. There was a cool breeze coming from somewhere beneath him, and now that the creature had retreated, a menacing silence fell, a silence punctuated only by the slow dripping of water deeper within the cavern. Oh, the cavern? Man, man, does this story have anything in common with what actually happened? As the warrior's eyes became accustomed to the poor light, he made out a worn stairway, curving away from him into the darkness. So, his suspicions were confirmed. He had stumbled upon another of his ex-master's outposts. They were becoming more frequent. Could this be the end of his long journey? Had he found the stronghold at last? There was only one way to find out. Yeah, the tree was the Dark Mage's outpost. Or the Beast Mages. Or the Beast Lord. Or the Masters. Or the... Never mind. Padding slowly down the stairway, the warrior readied himself for whatever abominations lay in wait at the bottom. Soon the stairway straightened out, and the warrior found himself on a narrow ledge. The phosphorescence from the cavern walls was enough to reveal that he was in a huge chamber that extended away into, into pitch darkness. Now the silence broke into distant sounds of angry growling. Whatever inhabited this place had obviously picked up his scent. The ledge that he was on appeared to be deserted, so he advanced slowly. There was a sizzling sound behind him. Instinctively, the warrior jumped and felt his feet singe as a white hot fireball shot behind him to explode violently against the cavern wall. So, his former masters were aware of his presence and realised his intent. He would have to be twice as alert now. They would use every means in their power to stop him. 
ahead of him now, he could make out a rough wooden ladder staked into the side of the ledge. Cat-like, he swung himself onto it and began his descent, dropping silently the rest of the way when he saw another ledge beneath him. No sooner had his feet hit the ground, than a scaled abomination rushed forward, jaws grinding ferociously. The warrior turned calmly and dispatched it with a single blow. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. Here I am building that up like it was something epic. Just punch it off. Mind you, it seems like the last chunk of this has just been me fighting things and diving away from them. And so the ordeal went on as he worked his way deeper into the cavern. Creatures to the like of which he had never seen beset him at every step, but each was destroyed with determination as the warrior remembered his promise to himself to continue until every last one was dead. He had just dropped onto another ledge when he caught a glimpse of something shining in the distance. Moving closer, his keen vision made out a key sitting on a shelf on the other side of a broad chasm. He started to move swiftly towards it when he was halted by a mighty roar. Suddenly, he was confronted by a huge beast-like guard. His opponent took a short moment to size him up and then made a bellowing charge swinging his double-headed battle axe at the warrior's head. Without losing a moment, the warrior sidestepped the blow and slammed his fist into the guard's throat. There was a sickening crunch as the neck snapped, and the warrior stepped back quickly as the huge body tumbled forward over the ledge. There was no moment for recovery before another hulking figure was rushing headlong at him. Cool, blimey, I'm getting fed up with this. It's all well and good when you can see this happening on the screen. I'm punching stuff left and right every five seconds, but when you're conveying that in a story, it's just the same thing over and over again. Anyway, no time of recovery before the hulking creature, yeah, yeah. But this time, the warrior was ready. But he's been ready for the last ten times, and his flying kick sent the guard plummeting backward to join his fellow. Now a clear way lay ahead of him to the quay. He sprinted along the remainder of the ledge, and just as the edge of the abyss met him, he leapt forward, hands reaching out to grasp the edge of the shelf. He made it in a shower of dirt and stones, and caught his breath as he hung swinging above a seemingly bottomless chasm. He could feel his sweaty hands begin to lose their grip. If he let go now, he would almost certainly die if he made it onto the shelf who knew where the key might lead him. Now the warrior's true destiny would be decided. Uh, well, that's that. How much did they pay the guy about that? Boy, Bessie's bloomers, that was some overwrought prose to describe me punching a couple of tumbleweeds and going into a tree. Although it seems they left it half finished. It just ends with me getting that key in the tree. I'll have to write the rest of this myself someday. Well, I could go on describing the, uh, the, 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 the warrior's objective. You must fight your way through several different regions. Yeah, this is where the thing gets weird. It just starts talking at this point on, just starts saying some really weird stuff here. I don't understand. In order to reach the art of the enemy's stronghold and face your ultimate adversary, any creatures you encounter will invariably be hostile and will cause damage when they come into contact with you. Yeah. Each time you are damaged, your art rate will increase. Your current art rate is shown on the monitor in the top left corner of the screen. If your, if your art rate gets too high, your hearts will burst, resulting in instant death. Yeah, yeah, heart rate. If I've got two hearts, shouldn't that be hearts rate? <laughs> <laughs> I crack myself up. During your attack on the stronghold, blah blah blah, there are also weapons, blah blah, controlling the warrior. Use the joystick to control the warrior's movements. If you can make any sense of this stuff, feel free to tell me. Jump up, move left, move right, crouch down, press the fire button to punch or kick while jumping. If you have a weapon in your possession, pressing fire will make the wild weapon. Rather than punch or kick, the joystick up down, the exit swing grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
The warrior can survive short falls, but stepping into a pit or off an iron edge will prove fatal. Pressing P at any stage will pause the... whatever. Right. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this here at the end? Do not hope for good luck. Your survival will depend on your skill and ingenuity alone. Well, I've got a bone to pick with that. More accurately, it will depend on my ability to memorise all the impossible hazards what pop up as I try over and over again tens of thousands of times.